Greetings, today I will talk about Snapback. So Snapback is a brand new release from the plugin company called Cable Guys. By the way, thanks to Cable Guys for sending me this over. So what Snapback is about? Snapback is an audio plugin which can recognize its audio input and get some triggering from that audio input. And it will trigger or a layer called transient or a snapback sound, which is a sound before the hit. As an example, here a rim shot without snapback effect. And here the same with a snapback. Okay, and this plugin can add a snapback sample and can add also a layer, so you can hear the difference here. And now snapback and a layer. So I will start to show you different examples from the kick to all of the track where I set a snapback effect. And after that, I will describe how I use it. So for the kick, for example, I have here an old kick, it's DMX kick. But very old school with no attack, a good body but no attack. So this is without snapback and then with. So what is happening inside? I have a snapback sample and a transient sample. I will mute them, that way you will hear what is happening. So we can hear that the two samples are pretty useful to achieve this attack in the kick. And we can also listen them alone. That way you will hear what is added only. Let's go on to the hi-hat. Some snapback sample and some layer sample. But this time I use snapback into a Ableton rack. That way I can automate when I want the snapback to happen. So with the automation line, you see it happened just once in a while. So we have this uh, little accent with the snapback and all the way long with the hi-hat, we have a snare noise, like a white noise occurring. What you get to know is that it's sensible to the dynamic if in your audio track you have several values in terms of gain for your hits, Snapback will recognize it and give you some loader transient on loader hits. Something great also with this kind of plugin from Cable Guys, it recognizes the audio input, which means it can be useful for some quantized music, dance, etc., but also for live play music, as it will follow the audio, no matter if the tempo change, it will trigger on the transient. Uh, let me go back to the kick and show you detail here. And on detail, you can select a length of this detail. So here you can see in gray, it's my original kick. That color is a layer one and that other color is a snapback. And as you can see, I have tuned everything for it to happen on the same attack of the original kick. And we achieve this by changing sometimes the shift. We can also change the volume, the dynamic. We can really sculpt this perfectly. And they did this also because sometimes we want to layer a kick with another a low bass kick and uh, this will be useful to put everything in phase. So in our example, it's just a click or a burst of noise. So it's not very important to be in phase, but imagine you want to add a low frequency sample as a transient, you will have to synchronize the sample with the phase of your original kick. So now for the rim shot. And now we snap back. Yeah. 
same technique, I set the snapback effect into a rack and I choose some of the parameters to be automated. To make the snapback happen once in a while, I choose to link the volume of the snapback, so this volume here is set to this macro. Then layer volume, this one here, is set to the second macro. The snap attack, which is the attack of the snap sample, is here, and then I have the layer decay and some pitch. So that way, with some quick drawing, here we got the volume, the layer volume, the snap attack, and the pitch. So just some slight change to have some different sounding layers or snapback along the way of the track. By the way, thanks to Stranger because it's in one of his video, recent video about snapback that I get this idea of modulating also each snapback. This effect can be here to uplift your tracks or add even special effect if you want. After that, it came to my mind that if this plugin can layer some samples, perhaps it can also replace some samples. I did it in uh, two techniques here, meaning that I will use the MIDI triggering to trigger what will happen in the replacer track. So let me solo the replacer track and the MIDI triggers I've set for it. To achieve this technique, we have to go into the trigger and in trigger, by default, it's in audio. And in audio, you can select the threshold, etc., a filter. And you will click here and set it to MIDI. After that, you will create a MIDI track. And in this MIDI track, you will add a note. We add a note exactly when we want this to be triggered. I can perhaps mute this one. Okay. So here I have set two snapback. I have a first one which will trigger this short break and a stranger snare. Okay, and this information corresponds to the layer of my rim shot. I just used the MIDI to experiment. So this first MIDI track will hit at each rim shot, triggering this. And then I add another snapback after this one. And this second snapback is triggered by another MIDI with less note. Okay, this is a trigger from the snapback one, and this is a trigger for the snapback two. And the snapback two will just add a kind of whistle sound from time to time. So with the two, I have And now for the last example, again with some MIDI triggering. In this user case, we have a snare here, which play quasi the same partition as the kick. Now I want some effect happening here, but not to be triggered at each snares, because there's a lot, lot of snares. So what I did, one more time, I open a snapback effect on that snare, triggered by MIDI. Once you have your MIDI track, you have to select the output of this MIDI track to go to the snare, and naturally it will hit the snapback. Then you write your MIDI note, no matter which, because in snapback you can select all notes or a single note according to your needs. So on that snare also, I have two snapbacks. The first one is for the texture of that snare, 78, from the original library. As you hear, I use it to add some high frequencies. And now in the display, we can see that we can extend the decay of that layer if we want it to cover all the sample. Yes, like this.
this is the first snapback for the texture of my snare. And the second one is the one triggered by the MIDI track I built under it. Now I will try on this piano. To add a layer, but just on the half notes. I just want a layer on each chord, but not on the little melody in between the chords. So what I'm doing, I open the snapback on this piano, and I will select in trigger for this to be triggered by MIDI. From there, I will create a MIDI track and send this MIDI track to the piano. And directly, Ableton will link it to the snapback here. When you have two or more snapback, you will have a list of different snapback here. From there, you draw your MIDI loop. So I just want it to happen. Set it on C3. From now, as it is a loop, I can extend it all across the track. And now everything should be set up. Okay, so now I got this sample occurring each time I have a piano. And white noise is not always the best because it will be confused with the hi-hat. So I will try to find uh, something different. So of course this will be not this. Why not? Let's take this one, put the pitch at zero. Remove a bit of the low frequencies and the eyes. Okay, so it seems nothing but as soon as we will send this piano into a big reverb, for example, it will sound different because of this little, little thing. We can check in detail mode. And we see that our transient is a bit earlier than the chord. So I will shift it a bit. Okay, and why not adding also a snapback sound? I always leave it loud when I'm looking for the sample and then I will tune it. Why not this one? So I will tune it now by soloing it. Not too much. Remove the eyes and remove the lows. I can also reduce the length. So you get the idea. It can be used for any sound. When you use it on tonal sound, just take care of making them shorter, just to emulate the attack of a piano or whatever keyboard. So let's listen quickly the wool tracks.
So this is why I find this plugin very useful, whether it's to uplift your signal and give more punch to some of your hits, or to use it also as a more obvious effect. For example, I try to open one snapback post echo. So let's try it with the rim shot again. Without the snapback post echo and with it. So as soon as snapbacks will recognize the audio input, you can use it in several ways. I can quickly explain for those who want more details. We already see a few of the parameters. So as a quick description, so on the left, you have a little sampler for the snapback samples and on the right, a little sampler transient library and samples. In each of them, you can tune it, attack, decay, pitch, shift, volume, and dynamic and filter, very useful. What do we have also? We can zoom, we can make it display. By clicking on output, you will see your signal when everything is mixed together. You can also bring your own sample into it, which will appear into the user folder here. So for each transient samples, you can be even more creative because you can pan it, you can play on the dynamic because this plugin is also sensible to dynamic of the audio input. So very useful if you want to replace samples sometime, you will draw down this dynamic parameter and you will have each hit, no matter the dynamic of the audio input. If the dynamic is set to zero, the volume of the sample will be always the same, which can be useful in some cases. Okay, we can also play with the width of the stereo file and shift it, so make it more earlier or later and flip the phase in case we need when we want to tune it very precisely into the detail mode. There we got also a limiter and it's like a clipper uh, limiter because it, it do a pretty good job for a limiter inside of another plugin. Of course, we must have a lot of presets as always with cable guys and we will go through some presets to end this little review. When you go into the presets, you really get the whole power of the plugin. Because most of the time, as you see in my own tutorial, I use it very wisely and not too loud. But you can literally change the face of your regime with this plugin. And I'm just on the snare for now. So it can be a good idea also to start with one of the presets and to tune it to your test. Let's try to go into the kick folder, even if it's a rim shot. And now let's go to the other preset. Here we can see in others that we have also some presets for synth attack. The same thing I was trying to do with my piano earlier in this uh, tutorial. So as you see, there's many things to do with this little plugin. And I think for now it's around 30 bucks because it's a Black Friday or something like that. Check out Cable Guys and their audio plugin because it's really crazy. So thanks for watching. I will come again on some Cable Guys plugins. The next one will be the Shepherdbox 3. I will try to do a review and some tips about it. You can also see on my channel, Children Records YouTube. Two days ago, I made a live session of processing one of my tracks. Four hours of processing several tracks of a song with most of the time some Cable Guys plugin. See you later. Dubwise.